Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EasyRAWAutomation.com and welcome to all new course from Easy Automation on GitHub Actions. And this course is split into two sections. One is the getting started section and another one is the advanced section. The getting started section is more towards the basics of GitHub Actions, like how you can work with it. And the advanced section, as it names, it's going to be a bit more advanced topics, which we'll be talking about in this video. So if you've never heard about the GitHub Actions before, GitHub Actions is a CI CD platform. It allows us to automate, build, test, and deploy the application. And also, it provides Linux, Windows, and Mac OS virtual machines to run our own workflows. Or we can host our own self hosted runners in our data center or cloud infrastructure to make use of GitHub Actions to be executed within our own self hosted data centers. So we can do whatever we want. And that's what is GitHub Actions in a nutshell. If you have really worked with Jenkins and Azure DevOps, you know what GitHub Actions is all about. It's pretty much exactly that. But there are more advanced features in GitHub Actions, which I'll be talking about in this course. So the agenda of the basic section is going to look something like this. We're going to start with the getting started video, which is this one. And then we'll be understanding the jobs and the workflows, working with multiple jobs, understanding GitHub expressions, different triggers, and then we are also going to be working with a .NET project with different branches and how the pull and push triggers are going to be working and how we can build a .NET application and how we can uh, do some sort of testing out from that and stuff. And we'll also be working with the external script executions along with the sh file or the bash file and then we'll see how we can make use of that within our workflow. And finally we'll also work about the troubleshooting of the workflows if we are getting struck with the pipelines itself. That's about the basics of this GitHub Actions course. And the advanced topics are going to be a bit more advanced, as it names, because we'll be talking about how we can run a Docker containers within the GitHub Actions. And we'll be also talking about how we can run a Docker Compose file inside the GitHub Action to deploy our own applications, databases, services using the GitHub Actions pipeline. We'll also be talking how we can run a Selenium test with the Docker Compose file in the GitHub Actions. And we'll also be talking because the Selenium tests are going to be running using the Selenium grid with different nodes like Firefox, Chrome or Edge Chrome browsers. If you're going to be running in that kind of setup, then we are also talking how we can wait for the Selenium grid setup to be up and running and then start spawning the Selenium test and run on the grid setup all inside the containers of test which are going to be running inside the GitHub Action Runners. So that's about even more advanced concept that we'll be talking about. And then we'll be also talking about how we can run a C-sharp spec flow and Selenium test along with the microservices of your application. And also, while the test runs, it's going to be generating the artifacts like test reports and videos. So we'll be talking about how we can take out those test reports out from the Selenium test container as an artifact and publish that artifact as a report page in the GitHub pages and also troubleshooting all these concepts that we're talking about. So this is about the advanced topic and it's going to be quite cool to understand how we can achieve all these things. And at the end, while the code check-in by the developer happens, it is going to do all the magical test execution for us in the microservices behind the scene. And it's going to be generating the complete report, which the whole team can look right into the pipeline instead of hunting around where the reports are all about. That's about the advanced topics of these GitHub Actions. So that's about this whole course. I'll be talking a lot more detail in this GitHub Actions course. Well, as I said, let's get into the getting started that we just saw on the agenda of this particular course. So before we get started with the GitHub Action itself, let's first go to their official page and see what is this GitHub Action, at least in their website. As you can see within this page, it tells about the automate your workflows from the idea to productions. And it says that GitHub Action makes you easy to automate all your software workflows now with a world class CI CDs and stuff. And also it talks about something like workflows. So basically, if you are familiar with the Jenkins, you know what is called as a freestyle job as well as the pipeline jobs. It's pretty much exactly something like that. And it is just going to be using what is called as an YAML file or YAML file or yet another markup language file which is going to be used to write your own workflows as you can see over here. And we're talking about all these workflows that you are seeing over here in the YAML file pretty soon. But yes, this is how it is going to be looking like. And you can see that they have got a marketplace with a lot of different plugins supports where you can deploy your 
application right into the Mabel or deploy to the Azure DevOps. You can also see that you can also deploy to Kubernetes and stuff. I mean, you can do whatever that you want. There are so many different actions available in the GitHub Actions that you can use of. And the good thing about this GitHub Actions is you can use the free 2000 minutes per month of GitHub Actions execution. What does that mean is that you could make use of the Linux, Windows, as well as the Mac OS virtual machines of GitHub Actions to be used for your test execution up to 2000 minutes, which is almost like 33 hours or something like that. So you can use that, which is more than enough for us to get started to understand how things work. And this is what we are gonna be using. I don't really have a paid version of it. I'm just gonna be using this 2000 uh, minutes itself. And this is especially for the private repositories. But if you have a public repository, then I don't think these minutes are gonna be even countered. You can just stride away, you can use it and start working with it, which is the powerful thing about it. And you can see that we love open source, which is great. So all you need to get started with the GitHub action is you need to have a GitHub account and you need to have a bit of codings that we'll be adding pretty much soon in this particular course while we go through. But yes, this is what you need. And if you go to the github.com slash exit automation, you will see that I have a repository which has got a lot of repositories uh, pretty much like I think there are 79 repositories I have got. I'm gonna use exactly the same repository to walk through you on the GitHub action itself. So let's start with the GitHub actions by creating our first repository. So I'm gonna click this new, and then I'm gonna say GitHub actions course. And this is gonna be, this is the GitHub actions course. And I'm gonna make this as a public repository. I'm not gonna make it private. And then I'm gonna, add a readme file and i'm just going to leave all these is as it is and i'm going to create a repository that's it this is the only thing which i need to be doing for getting started with my github actions and you can see that right now we have this particular repository and now we are going to start working with the github workflows so in order to work with the github actions workflows you can see that within the repository there is something called as an action tab. if you click this action tab you can see that there are going to be something like a get started with the GitHub actions where you can set up a workflow yourself, something like this. You can create a simple workflow or you can also do some sort of deployments, integrations. If you have any source code that is relevant to that particular operation that you are seeing over here. We will be touching about these deployments and continuous integration steps later on in this course. But at the moment, we have a simple workflow that is something given over here. You can just use this simple workflow straight away, something like this, or you can go to the codes and you can add a new file where you need to just give something like dot github slash workflows slash any file name dot yaml file. So for example, this is gonna be something like a basics.yml file. And if I give this, this is basically a workflow file. So this workflow file can then be used within our GitHub Actions. So I'm just going to create a simple GitHub workflow, which I'm even going to be copying from the GitHub Actions page itself. So if I just go to the uh, GitHub Actions documentations over here, and if you see they have something called as a quick start, I'm just going to copy that and I'm gonna paste it over here and I will tell you what these things are uh, in our next video but for now I'm just gonna copy for the simplicity purpose and I'm gonna paste it over here and then I'm going to commit this new file and if I go to the actions this time and if you go to the github actions demo you can see that there is some operation happening just create basic.yaml file. So it is something automatically created the name that we have seen. Uh, and once I click that, you will see that there is a build operation happening over here. And it is also built in zero seconds, which is great. And if I click that particular build, you will see that there was a magic happened. It set up a job and then it also performed a run operation of the echo that we just copy pasted. And then it also did the same echo like two more times and then it also completed the job. So what has really happened behind the scene? Basically, we just created a simple workflow file in the GitHub Actions and it actually got triggered and then it executed 
and then it also completed the execution and you can see there is a green tick mark there and if i go back to the code you can see that the dot github slash workflows of the basic.yaml file is sitting over here which i just created and these are the steps that i copy pasted so this is exactly what was executed like these three steps what was actually executed in the actions that we saw over here on this particular jobs and you can see that these are jobs and these are the same jobs that we actually copy pasted in the workflows as well as you can see over here so something has really happened we have no understanding of what these things are and we don't even know what is this ubuntu latest is all about we'll be talking about all these things in our next video but this is just getting started guys just do this setup by yourself by creating a repo and then just follow along with this workflows and if you are going to go a leap more then just go and read this documentation you'll be even more ahead of what i'm going to be telling in our next lecture